Now we will again talk about the clever man. In the meantime, there was a commotion that the clever man is traveling and is coming with great pomp and great sophistication. The simple man also came running to greet him with great joy and said to his wife, Give me quickly the yuppa. Let me go and greet my dear friend. Let me see him. She gave him the pelts and he ran out towards him. The clever man was riding in a carriage pompously. The simple man came out to greet him and welcomed him joyously with great love and said to him, My dear brother, how do you do? Praise is God for bringing you and giving me the privilege of seeing you. And the clever man looked at him. To him, the entire world was, was also nothing, as it was stated above that all the people of the world amounted to nothing in his regard, for he considered himself smarter than the whole world. All the more so such a person who appears like an insane person, but nonetheless, on account of their childhood love, they, when they had loved each other very much, he drew him close and traveled with him into town. The two homeowners, the fathers of these two sons, of the clever and the simple man, had died during the time when the clever man was out in countries and had left behind their houses. This simple man was in his place, and so he moved into his father's house and inherited it. The clever man, however, was in foreign countries and had no, no one to take possession of the house. The clever man's house came to an end and was lost, and nothing at all remained of it, so the clever man had no house to move into when he arrived. He traveled to an inn and suffered anguish there because it wasn't the kind of inn that he wanted. And the simple man had now found himself a new calling, I would always run to the clever man with love and joy. And he noticed that the clever man had affliction from the inn. So the simple man said to the clever man, Brother, come over to me, to my house. You'll stay with me and I will gather all my belongings into one bunch. And you will have my entire house. This was agreeable to the clever man. So he went into his house and stayed with him. And the clever man was always full of suffering, for he had left a reputation that he is a great wise man, a great craftsman, and a very great doctor. A nobleman came and ordered for him to make him a gold ring. He made him quite a wonderful ring, and etched out engravings with very wonderful paths, etching in it a tree which was a total marvel. The nobleman came, and the ring did not please him at all. He had enormous suffering, because he knew in himself that if this ring with the tree would be in Spain, it would be quite esteemed. It would be a novelty there, but here it's not appreciated whatsoever. And similarly, one time a great nobleman came and brought an expensive diamond that was brought from distant lands, and he brought with him another diamond with an image and bid him to engrave just as this image is. So should he etch out on the diamond that he had brought him, which was from distant lands, he etched out precisely like the image, except he was shy. One thing which nobody at all would discern except him alone. The nobleman came and took the diamond and he liked it very much, but the clever man had great agony from the shortcoming that he lacked. He thought to himself, as smart as I am now, should I make a mistake? And similarly, in medicine he suffered as well. When he came to a sick person, and he gave him treatments, of which he knew clearly that if the patient should only survive, he would certainly have to be healed from the treatments, since they are very excellent treatments, then... However, the patient died. The public said that he died because of him, that he had great affliction from this. And likewise, sometimes 
he gave a sick person treatments and the, and the sick person became healthy and the public said it's a chance occurrence in other words he became healthy like that it was not through him and he also suffered very much from that so he was constantly full of afflictions and similarly when he needed a garment he summoned the tailor and took pains with him until he taught him to make the garment in the fashion he desired in the way he knew the tailor met the task and made the garment just as he wanted except the tailor erred on one lapel and didn't effectuate it on par he suffered great anguish from this because he knew in himself that although here no one discerns it if i were only in spain with this lapel they would laugh at me and i would look ridiculous and so he was always full of suffering.